Before you can determine which furnace filter to buy or how often to change it, it's good to have a basic understanding of how a home heating and air conditioning system works. Forced air heating and cooling systems distribute heated or cooled air throughout a home using supply and return ductwork. The ductwork is connected to supply registers and return air grills. When the system's blower fan runs, it pulls air through the return air grills, through the return ductwork, through the filter, by the fan, through the heat exchanger, which heats the air, or the evaporator cooler to cool the air, depending on the season, and into the supply ductwork through the supply registers, and then back into the return ductwork to repeat the process. The filter is a very important part of the cycle. I tested the performance of three filters by measuring the temperature just above the evaporator coil. Before I show the test results, let's spend a little time talking about filters. Next to the blower will be the return air duct work. Now in some systems, you may find a return air grill in a ceiling that has a filter behind it. There'll be a slot in this location where the filter is placed. Somewhere on the filter you'll find an arrow that indicates the direction of airflow. Insert the filter in the slot so that arrow points towards the blower. The industry standard to rate filters is called MERV. The ratings range from 1 to 20. The higher the number, the smaller the size of particles that are blocked, and the more restrictive the filter. Filters rated 12 and above are mostly found in clean rooms and hospitals. I've done a lot of work around clean rooms. These clean rooms had powerful fans that were able to push air through the dense filters, and the fans constantly ran to clean the air. Ratings 1 through 11 are typically found in household systems. This is a MERV 2 filter. It's just a flat panel and sort of transparent. This is a MERV 8 filter. The material is denser, it's more restrictive, and will trap smaller and more particles than the MERV 2. The filter is pleated. If we were to flatten this out, there would be more surface area. And the theory is that the more surface area will compensate for the denser, more restrictive filter material. The primary purpose of the filter is to keep dirt and debris from collecting on the blower fan fins, making it inefficient, and from keeping dirt and debris from collecting on the equipment beyond the blower, causing restriction. Dirt that collects on the evaporator coil, insulates it, and makes the cooling system less efficient. Recently, there's a trend to design filters with the thought of improving indoor air quality inside a home. Here are the two MERV 8 filters I'll be testing. This one was in place for about three months, and this is the clean filter. These are just generic filters. I paid four or five dollars a piece for them. The first filter to test is the Dirty Merv 8. I'm choosing to use temperature to test the filter. If you were to contact your service company that takes care of your furnace, they would likely use a manometer and they would check the pressure drop on either side of the filter. Printed on most filters, you'll find the pressure drop at different fan speeds. This will be key to purchasing the correct filter for your furnace. I'll measure the temperature by inserting the sensor into the supply duct just above the evaporator coil. The furnace has been running for 15 minutes. The temperature probe is in the supply side ductwork 
and the temperature is stabilized at 148.6. And next, the clean MERV 8, and it's stabilized at 143.6. And last, the clean MERV 2. The supply duct temperature is 141.4. We can conclude that as filters get dirty, they become more restrictive and that some filters are more restrictive than others. Restriction slows down airflow and slower airflow increases the temperature at the heat exchanger. Prolonged high temperatures can cause the heat exchanger to crack prematurely and usually the cheapest repair is to replace the furnace. Slow airflow over the evaporator coil during the cooling season can cause the coil to freeze up and possibly damage the compressor. Installing a filter that is too restrictive for your system's fan speed or not changing the filter often can be costly. The key to selecting the filter that won't damage your system or cause the fan to work harder and waste energy is to know the fan speed for your system. This plate is located inside the furnace. Notice that the maximum static pressure is 0.5 measured in water column. The rule of thumb is that the filter's restriction should be no more than 20% of this number. That's 0.1 for this furnace. Printed on better quality filters, you'll find a chart. It'll show the MERV rating. You'll also find a chart that shows how much resistance the filter has at various fan speeds. The top row shows various fan speeds measured using CFM. The bottom row shows resistance in water column. If the fan speed for heating was 850 CFM, then a clean filter would have 0.09 water column resistance. And let's say for cooling, the fan speed was 1000 CFM, then the resistance would be 0.13. So this MERV2 filter would max out the 20% target. Here's a label from a MERV11 filter, and at 820 CFM, you'd be using up 50% of the maximum static pressure for this furnace. For the question of how often to change a filter, that can depend upon the conditions within your home. The simplest thing to do is to monitor it and when it starts to become discolored, change it. If you've got a lot of time on your hands, you could buy a manometer, check the pressure drop on either side of the filter as it gets dirty, and change it when the pressure drop becomes too high. I hope you found this video helpful. A thumbs up is always appreciated. Click on the channel name, Know How Now, to find other videos. And thanks for watching.